Hello friends, The Bourbon Art here. Welcome to lesson nine in my bourbon school. So there are actually three things you can do with the wood, um, the oak, uh, that can sort of prepare it for enhancing the whiskey. And it's seasoning, and it's charring, and it's toasting. And you may have heard about a couple of uh, these things, right? So what I'll be taking you through today are the differences and exactly a little bit of deep dive on what these three areas are. And to help me through, um, I'm actually sipping on a mixture's toasted, uh, seems appropriate, uh, bourbon here. And I'll explain exactly what toasting is a little bit later in this lesson. So first of all, cheers y'all. Mm. Mm, very nice. All right, let's take the first thing first. So seasoning, you may not have heard about this. And seasoning in effectively is just drying the staves outside in open air. So as you can see in the picture here, uh, a lot of these staves have been cut from the wood and it's literally being left outside in rain or snow, whatever, for a long time. And I'll get on to how long time that is as simply to primarily dry. But it's not the only thing because seasoning does two things. It, it reduces the moisture level or the water level in the wood itself, but it also removes some of the unwanted compounds, especially the tannins that can be a little bit harsh. So when you leave it outside, sort of the elements and all the good things that are in there sort of attract itself to the wood, um, and then it will remove uh, those unwanted uh, uh, compounds there. And actually a little bit surprising. So as you can see in the picture here, the way that you cut the wood, you cut them sort of into quarters and then you do the staves from this. and just when you have cut down the uh, the wood, then uh, the water content is actually 50% in the wood. It's, it sounds a little bit har uh, higher than, than you would think, right? But it of course varies from species to species, but around 40 to 50%, some sometimes even up to 60% of the wood uh, is actually water. And then after you have um, dried it outside for, for some time, um, it reduces, uh, by nature, nature does this, it reduces the water level, even though that it's outside in rain and, and snow, if, if uh, you do that in areas where it actually snow there. So typically it will come down to about 12 and a half percent, which is sort of the, the sweet spot that you're looking for there. And when you have reduced the moisture content in the wood itself, uh, this is where the um, molecule structure of the wood becomes very, very dense, and then it becomes easier to hold the liquor as well. So that's why you're doing it. But of course, as I said, it's also the unwanted compounds, especially tannins, that it's removed. Okay. So there are some uh, people that have done experiments with the doing very prolonged uh, seasoning outside. Um, as you can see here, here are two, if you know if you ever heard about this series, uh, Buffalo Trace has done an experimental series where they're doing all kinds of weird experiments uh, with, uh, with the whiskey itself. And on these two here, it's a little bit difficult to see. So I'm just gonna zoom in on the label here a little bit. And as you can see, uh, the, f the one to the far left is actually being um, stored in barrels that, that have been seasoned for three years outside. So that's a very, very long time and obviously very expensive to just leave the wood and the timber outside. And the one next to me, uh, four years, so, so quite a lot. And, and people that have tried these um, uh, sort of report back that the whiskey is more mellow, it's easier to drink, and that is probably because such a long time outside uh, in open air has removed all these very harsh uh, compounds in, in, in the wood. So, so it actually does work, but it, it's a little bit unusual. So typically seasoning outside is three to six months, but there are manufacturers that do uh, a year and two years routinely. So it's a little bit up to, to the individual manufacturer. So that's basically seasoning. So that's happening before the barrel actually become the barrel, right? Okay. Then we're coming on to charring. Right, and this is gonna be a little bit repeat if you've seen the previous lessons because the recap here is that charring is sort of like intense heat for a few seconds. As you can see in the picture, it's literally an open flame, um, sometimes up to 2000 Fahrenheit, uh, which is, um, yeah, 1100 Celsius. Uh, yeah, actually sometimes even, even higher and only for a few seconds, right? Um, if you probably remember from last time as well, we talked about these different char levels, uh, one, two, three, four, and the higher level, the more intense heat. And the one to the far left there, also called alligator char, is about 55 to 60 seconds. So less than a minute, and then you're sort of done 
uh, with the barrel. And if you wonder why you are charring the barrels in the first place, I will cover it a little bit here, but I, I think you should watch some of the previous lessons where I go into depth about that as well. Okay. And then of course, there's this toasting that you may have heard of. You probably heard about it uh, primarily because there's some products out there that are toasted products, but I'm going to explain to you right now what the toasting process is. So I'm gonna show you another picture, a little bit like the one before, where I have the four char levels there, one, two, three, four. But as you can see to the left of these, there are one, three ones there that, that are even lower than one, right? And the one uh, to the very left, um, the far left, is sort of like a, a very mild um, uh, toast. The one, uh, number two there, is a sort of like a medium toast. And number three is sort of like a heavy toast. So it's not really charring. It's something, as you can see the, on the picture, something that is less aggressive compared to this open flame, like 2000 Fahrenheit uh, um, for, for a few seconds there. And I'll show you what, what, it, what it actually is. So toasting, it, it's almost like charring, but it is much lower heat um, and it's, it's being done for minutes basically. As you can see here, it is a heat source, it's inside the barrel, it never touches the wood, which obviously charring does, dramatically so. But uh, toasting never act actually touches the wood. So it's sort of like a heat flame, uh, heat source in the middle of the barrel. Uh, the heat source is roughly 500 Fahrenheit, which is like 260 Celsius. Uh, so, so of course, much, much lower, which is also why it can sort of stay there for, for an extended period of time. Uh, there, there are huge differences on, on how much time you are doing to preparing uh, the barrels with toasting. Some go as low as five to six to seven minutes, and some go even up to 45 minutes, which is quite a long time, of course. But it depends really what you what you wanna look for. So so charring and toasting, they're, they're cousins. They're, they're sort of doing the same thing. They're preparing the wood in the barrel for, for making better whiskey, right? Okay, so you can say, if you look at charring versus toast, so they do the same thing, but what is actually the best? Because they're both facilitating, if you will, uh, the production of better whiskey and access to these wood sugars that are inside the barrel as well. So. I will just explain to you really quickly here how I view the main differences between charring and toasting. Okay, so I have a little chart here. Um, so I'll fill this out uh, in a couple of uh, seconds here. So if you look at charring versus toasting, let's take charring first. Some of the advantages there, so it, it increases the internal surface area of the wood, especially if it's alligator char. You can sort of, sort of the surface becomes much bigger because it, it's charring, uh, charcoal almost uh, on the inside there. So that's much more surface for the whiskey to interact with the wood. So that's, that's one of the primary reasons there. It also, of course, adds the natural color of, uh, to the whiskey, right? As you remember from some of the previous lessons, the whiskey goes in completely, uh, it looks like water, and when it comes out, it has this beautiful color. And the primary reason is because, of course, the interaction with the heavy charring there. So that's very positive because we like a nice color in our whiskey. The third thing is that when you do this in intense heat, uh, source inside the barrel where you literally char it. It generates this caramel layer that we talked about in, in a previous lesson. Um, and it also adds naturally then caramel flavor to the whiskey, which is something most people like. So that's a clear advantage of going charring as well. And then there is one thing. So this um, this carbon um, in, um, in in the, almost the debris um, of, of of the of the char there, it acts sort of a little bit. You may have heard about charcoal filters. It actually does act as a filter, uh, so it makes sure that some of the unwanted things from the actual wood uh, do not mingle with the whiskey itself. So that that's a clear advantage of doing charring as well. So, and then of course, just a small point there, it is actually the law, as we discussed probably in the first lesson and lesson number two as well. So if you wanna make a bourbon or you wanna make a rye whiskey, you have to char the barrel on the inside. So that's a clear advantage of course of charring is that you actually have to do it um, in, uh, by, by law. Of course, um, the disadvantage, especially when we compare it to toasting in a second, is that it does not penetrate too far into the wood, um, th this charring here, because it is only there for 25 to 55 seconds. So it, it sort of 
relatively uh, there's there's a limit how far that that heat can go into the wood when you only have it in seconds so that's that's a little bit of disadvantage because you obviously want to leverage as much of the wood as possible and this is where the toasting come in as i'll explain now so toasting uh since there is sort of lower heat and it it it, it it interacts with the wood over a longer time it also tends to generate more vanilla flavor and vanilla flavor is definitely something that we like in our whiskies so that's an advantage of toasting the second thing as i discussed before um, you know it does penetrate the wood more uh, when it stays there you can just imagine the heat source there up to 45 minutes in the middle of the barrel the entire barrel will be heated up almost of course mostly on the inside but also to some extent on the outside so this heat season, heat um, uh, sort of way to 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 intact with uh, with the barrel um, that goes all the way into the wood so this is a clear advantage of toasting there's also this thing and i put in parentheses there potentially because it depends a little bit on how you do it uh, compared to charring there is the pos possibility that it interacts more with the wood sugars so it doesn't retrieve the wood sugars uh, more in this process but it makes it more available for uh, the whiskey when it interacts over time uh, and, and wood sugars interaction with the wood sugars is something you really want because it makes better tasting whiskey and then of course um, at this advantage if you would only do um, toasting of the barrel and not charring uh, then it would use a much lighter color and and generally people don't like when the whiskey uh, is, is too light of a color uh, you think it's too young or it hasn't really been aged but if you only age it in a toasted barrel um, even for years and years and years it would generate only a very very light color and that's not something that we generally like um, of course um, as i said before even if you wanted to you could not make a bourbon or a rye or a wheat whiskey um, because you have to do charring uh, and and if you only did toasting then you would have to do stuff like uh, moonshine uh, and you know corn whiskey and a few other things such as american whiskey or just cold whiskey uh, that you could do with only a toasted barrel so as you can see here there are advantages and disadvantages uh, by both area here so you could think why don't I then combine the two? Could you literally not combine the two to get the best of two worlds? And absolutely. So there are two approaches here. The first one is that some manufacturers, this includes the Independence Dave Company and Brown Foreman and, and others, um, they actually do a toasting of the barrel before they char it. So it's sort of like a, it's of course more expensive and they don't do it for all products, um, but you can actually do a pre-toast before you do the actual charring. So that sort of gives you the best of two worlds. So if you wanna put a little bit more expense, uh, expense into the manufacturing of the barrel, that could be one way to go. So mm -hmm. the second way to go here, of course, is, um, and that's also uh, something that uh, is probably the way that you heard about toasting before, is that after it has been uh, matured in, in a normal charred barrel, then you put it into a second barrel. So it does a second finishing, as we call it, in a toasted barrel. So some manufacturers are doing this, and that's why they call it toasted products. So I have three examples here. Um, the mixers one, the one that I'm sipping on right here, um, they, they are very famous for doing toasting. They're not the first one, but they're probably the one that are most famous for doing toasting. There's also the Elijah Craig in the middle here. Um, they do a secondary toasting uh, in, in the barrel um, after they've done the normal Elijah Craig. And also just next to me here came out semi-recently, uh, Basil Hayden. Um, uh, came out with a toasted product where they also did a second aging in a um, in a toasted barrel. So so some of the products there, if you see it uh, out on the market and it says toast or toasted, it's probably because it has been uh, finished secondary in a toasted barrel, right? And actually. Um, they're coming, becoming quite popular. And, and one thing is, of course, the whiskey actually tends to be a little bit better. I can definitely vouch for that on the whiskey that I'm, I'm drinking right here. But also, I'll be honest with you, because it literally makes sense. So look at these two products here. So this is Elijah Craig, a uh, normal bourbon, like, like been around for years and years and years and years. And then this fairly recent addition, the toasted, the toasted barrel version, which is just the normal Elijah Craig that 
then they've done a second finishing in a toasted barrel. And as you can see here, the MSRP on the normal bourbon is around $30, depending of course where you live. And the MSRP on the toasted barrel is about $50. And so that extra $20, and I can tell you the expenses for getting an extra barrel and doing a little bit of extra aging and handling, etc., is probably in the vicinity of two to three, maximum $4. So it is very, very, very profitable to make these uh, toasted products. And of course, you know, there's also a little bit of hype around this toasted product. Uh, in fact, the one that I'm sipping on today here, the mixtures, even though it has a, an MS, MSRP of about $100, uh, they're so scarce, they are producing so low quantities that secondary pricing here is going through the roof. So I've been on wine searcher here, just so you can see an example here. So this $100 bottle here is, uh, you know, average, the average price here is over $400. It's pretty insane there. So. All right, so that was the lesson here, number nine. So now you know a little bit about seasoning. So that's preparing the wood before it comes to the barrel. So reducing the water content and reducing the tannins. And then you know about charring and toasting. They each have their advantages and disadvantages. And if you're very clever, you can actually combine the two and get the best of two worlds. So thank you for watching. Uh, cheers.